In this video, I will show you how to create a new app record in the App Store Connect portal. Before you can upload a build of your app to App Store Connect, you will create this app record. It's basically the shell in which your app machine app will be nested. You will need to upload some of the app information in App Machine so App Machine will be able to upload your app for you. Let's get started by going to the Publish tab on the left of the App Machine dashboard. Click on the Setup App Store button. We need to know what kind of app you are publishing. If it's an app which will be available in the Apple App Store for anyone, choose Apple App Store. If you want to limit your user group to a smaller audience, enterprise, or B2B apps could be more suited for you. You can read more about that in our documentation center, or you can ask our support desk for advice. For this video, we will choose Apple App Store and click Next to connect your account at Apple to App Machine. Click the Open the Guide button to open the support article to get more information on this process. It shows the steps in this process and the link to the right page in the App Store Connect. For this video, we will assume you have already created an App Store Connect account. If you have not, please do that before continuing with this video. You will find a link in the description below how to create an Apple Developer account. Let's log into your App Store Connect account using your Apple ID and password. You need to create an App Store Connect API key to connect App Machine to your App Store account. These are the keys which will be used by the App Machine to publish your app. Open the Users and Access screen and select the Keys tab. If you don't see the Keys tab on the page, then it is likely that you don't have sufficient access to use this resource. Contact your Apple Developer Account Administrator to adjust the user rights of your account. On the Keys page, you'll find the issuer ID as well as the ability to create a new App Store Connect API key. Click the plus button to create a new API key. Enter a name for the key. The name of the key is purely used for reference and will be displayed on the keys page as long as the key is active. You can use this one API key for multiple apps, so it might make sense to use a more generic name like your company's name. Please note that this name is visible to any member of the developer account with access to the keys section of the users and access page, therefore it may not be wise to use App Machine as the name of your API key. Set the keys access rights to either admin or app manager. Other access rights will not be sufficient for our system to be able to publish your app to the App Store. Click on the Generate button to create the API key which is a .p8 file. You will see the new key visible on the Keys page as active. The key will be listed with a key ID and a link which allows you to download the API key. Copy the issuer ID at the top of the screen. This will place the ID on your clipboard. Go back to the App Machine dashboard and paste the issuer ID in the first text box, Issuer ID. Go back to the App Store Connect tab in your browser and copy the key ID using the same process. Now, return to the App Machine dashboard once again and paste the ID into the second text box labeled Key ID. Again, return to the App Store Connect page and download the API key file by clicking in the Download API key on the right. A pop-up opens where you click Download to save the file on your computer at whatever location you choose. Click Save the file. This will only take a few seconds and now, you are ready to return to the App Machine dashboard and upload the P8 file. Click on the Select File button and choose the right file. The file name starts with Off Key and has the .p8 extension. If you are building a new app, you probably don't see your app name yet in this list. In that case, click Create a New App. App Machine will automatically create a new app bundle for you and you should see a screen with the text your bundle has been created. Now it's time to return to the App Store Connect to create your app. Open the guide to keep track of all the steps you will need to take. Open the home screen in App Store Connect. Select My Apps at the top left of the screen and click the plus sign in the top left corner. In the New App modal, you'll have to specify all the information about your app. Let's walk through the requested information in order to explain to you what Apple is asking and what you will have to enter or select. The first option Platforms allows you to specify the platforms for which your app will be made available. App Machine apps only offer support for the iOS platform, so only select iOS. Selecting any additional platform will cause our system to be unable to publish your app to the App Store. Next you will enter your app's name. This is how your app will be displayed in the App Store. Please note that app names in the App Store have to be unique and are limited to a maximum of 30 characters. If your app name is already in use, you will need to try other options. Next, you will select the primary language. This concerns the main language of your app and will also determine the app store in which your app will be published primarily. Although this language setting does not determine the availability of your app, 
it can determine whether the app name of your choosing is available for use. Now you will click on the Bundle ID box and select your app. This is the unique technical identifier of your app, which was created by App Machine during one of the previous steps. Next, you will enter a SKU to identify your app. This is a second unique identifier for your app, which is not visible in the App Store and therefore less relevant. We advise you to fill this with the last part of your bundle identifier. Finally, you need to select full access for the user access setting. This option allows you to limit which users within your developer team will be able to view this app in App Store Connect. Now click Create to finish this process. This screen may take some time to process. If the process seems stuck, we advise you to refresh the browser. You will see the overview screen of your app. Most of the information on this page will be filled out automatically by App Machine. But there is some information that App Machine is not able or not allowed to fill for you. Please continue following the next steps to get your app ready for publication through App Machine. From the left side menu, open the Pricing and Availability page. On this page, you will be able to select a price tier for your app, as well as specify the countries or regions in which your app will become available once published. Choose Free if you don't plan to sell your app in the Apple App Store. Scroll down till you see Availability and choose all countries or regions selected or choose one or more countries if you want to limit the availability of your app. You can scroll down and see that all the other settings are already set by App Machine. Now click on the Save button at the top right of the screen. Next, we will complete your app privacy settings. From the left side menu, open the App Privacy page. On this page, you will have to specify your app's data collection practices. This is something you will have to do yourself. App Machine is not allowed to complete this information for you. This process does contain some technical terms, so please pay attention to what you need to fill in. Let's get started by clicking on the Get Started button. Note, you don't need to fill in the privacy policy URL here. You can enter that data in App Machine. Apple wants to inform app users how each app handles their privacy information. That's why you need to explain what data your app collects. In the data collection, modal you should select Yes, we collect data from this app and click Next. On the next page, scroll down to Contact Info where you see checkboxes. Whether or not you enable the checkboxes in this section depends on the functionality you've added to your app. For example, if your app contains a contact form through which personal information can be provided, then enable the boxes for the information that the user can provide within the app. Our sample app does not require any of this information, so I will leave these unchecked. The health and fitness section is about your app collecting health and fitness data. The app machine platform doesn't use these APIs, so leave them unchecked. However, if you've created a custom green block which uses these API, then enable the checkboxes that apply. At financial info, the payment info option concerns payments which are handled through means other than a payment service. For example, if your app contains a manual payment option, then the payment info option has to be checked. If your app uses PayPal checkouts, then don't check this box. If your app collects any other type of financial information, you should check the appropriate boxes. At location, enable the precise location in order to show the location of a user on a map within your app. Enable sensitive info if your app collects sensitive info. Next is contacts. There is no module available in App Machine that allows you to collect data via the device's contacts lists, so do not enable this. Next is user content. The customer support option is present within every App Machine app via the I need support email option on the app information page. Therefore, the customer support option has to be enabled. Review the other options depending on the content that's in your app. For browsing history, there is no module available in App Machine that allows you to collect data related to the user's browsing history. Leave this unchecked. For search history, there is no module available in App Machine that allows you to collect data related to the user's search history. Leave this unchecked. At Identifiers, please select both the user ID and the device ID. These are used by App Machine to send push notifications. Enable purchases if your app collects data related to users' purchases or purchase tendencies. Select product interaction in usage data if you have enabled the analytics tracking in your app. In that case, your app will collect analytical information via Firebase. Other options should be enabled if applicable based on your app's content. Enable all options within the diagnostic section. Last is other data. Enable this option if you collect any other types of data through your app that has not been mentioned. Now click Save and OK. Now you need to enter additional information per data type. 
For each of the enabled options, you'll have to indicate how the collected data is used by you or your third-party partners, if any. Click on each setup tile and answer three questions for each tile. Click on Setup Precise Location in the Precise Location tile. Select App Functionality and click Next. Scroll down to the question Is the precise location data from this app linked to the user's identity? Answer No and click Next. Read all the information and click Next. Select No and click Save. The tile now displays your choices, and you can click on any of them to review or change them again. Let's move on to the next settings, User Content. As before, click on the link in the tile under Customer Support. Select App Functionality, click Next, and scroll down to the question, Is the customer support data from this app linked to the user's identity? Answer with No and click Next. Select No and click Save. Move on to the identifiers where you click on the link in the tile under User ID. Select App Functionality and click Next. Scroll down to the question Is the user ID data from this app linked to the user's identity? and select No and Next. Select No and click Save. Click on the link in the Device ID tile. Select App Functionality and Next. Scroll down to the question Is the device ID data from this app linked to the user's identity? and answer No and click Next. No and Save. In the Usage Data section, click on Setup Product Interaction, select App Functionality, and click Next. Scroll down to the question Is the product interaction data from this app linked to the user's identity? and click No and Next. No and Save. In the Diagnostics section, click on the link in the tile about crash data. Select App Functionality and click Next. Scroll down to the question Is the crash data from this app linked to the user's identity? Click No. Scroll down and click Next. Select No and click Save. Click on the link in the tile about performance data. Select App Functionality and click Next. Scroll down to the question Is the performance data from this app linked to the user's identity? Click No. Scroll down and click Next. Select No and click Save. Click on the link in the tile under Other Diagnostics Data. Click App Functionality and Next. Scroll down to the question Is the Other Diagnostics Data from this app linked to the user's identity? Click No. Scroll down and click Next. And choose No and Save for Other Diagnostics Data. You did it! You filled in all of the app privacy settings. Don't forget to hit the Publish button at the top right to submit the app privacy settings. Then click Publish on the modal and you are ready to return to the app machine dashboard to complete this process. Go to the Publish tab and click on the Setup App Store button in the Apple App Store section. You will again see the modal like at the beginning of this video. In the Link Your App screen, select your app and click Next. Congratulations! Your app is now successfully linked to your App Machine account. If you visit the Publish page on your dashboard, the Apple App Store settings will now show Edit Store Info. This shows that your app is fully connected now to App Store Connect. There is another video which shows you how to edit the store info.